and please make sure you come back in 2018 because under this government it's going to be a cracker. Question number 12, talk, Melissa Lee. Big talk, bro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Government Digital Services and asks, what is the difference between the Government Chief Technology Officer, the Government Chief Information Officer, and the new Chief Technology Officer role that she is creating? Mr. Uh, Speaker. Now, I think, I think what we'll do is we'll just get the last bit of the question asked as per the yellow sheet. Thank you. Oh. Can I just say the last bit, sir? Yes. That she has created. The Honourable Claire Curran. Mr Speaker, happy Christmas to you and to my colleagues across the House, to the Hansard staff, the clerk's office, the messengers no, and no the gallery. No speeches, please. Get on with it. <laughs> the, member, the member may be confused by these roles because the job titles changed under her government. The GCIO changed to the Government Chief Digital Officer in June this year. The Government Chief Technology Officer reports to him. The new Chief Te Technology Officer position announced today, yesterday is a ministerial appointment and will have a broader advisory focus going across the economy, society and the government. The other roles are held by senior officials and focus on digital transformation across government and its implementation. To fix up your mess. Why has she announced this new role when this position already exists and is delivering support for the government and the communities of New Zealand? <laughs> uh, Mr Speaker, I don't think the member was listening to my last to the answer to the last question. These roles are not the same. The Chief Technology Officer appointment is a ministerial appointment. We'll have a broader advisory focus going across the economy, society and government. It's an outward facing role. The other roles are held by senior officials and focus on digital transformation across government. And unlike her government, this government is investing in this space rather than cutting funding. Supplementary question to the Minister. How can she justify spending an estimated half a million dollars a year on this unnecessary role when the Haifu indicated the budget was tight and her government can't even find $350,000 for a worthy cause like kids can? Because, Mr Speaker, unlike the previous government, which paid lip service to uh, the digital economy, which paid lip service to digital inclusion, which paid lip service to digital rights and data governments, a governance, this government takes this seriously and this is a strong step in creating a digital strategy for New Zealand, which this go the previous government never did. Uh, to the Minister, aside from the salary and expenses and travelling totalling $500,000 per annum, what other costs does she expect the creation of the role will incur? Mr Speaker, those um, figures are estimates. I would expect that the CTO will be prudent and careful with any taxpayer money. Uh, we have gone through the appropriate checks to ensure that that salary is in line with a role of this type, and this is an important area of uh, priority for this, uh, this new government. Dr Duncan Wheat. Uh, to the Minister, what support is she aware of for a Chief Technology Officer? What a good question. Um, on the 21st of September, the former minister, uh, Simon Bridges, uh, said he, quote, was considering the establishment of a chief technology officer-led think tank, uh, unquote. Given that statement, I would have thought there would have been more excitement about my announcement from the members sitting opposite me. That concludes oral questions. I call on government order of the day number one. Christchurch Cathedral reinstatement bill. Committee stage continued. I declare the House and Committee for further consideration.